In today's video, we're talking about the best settings for LG C4 OLED. So, this TV is absolutely amazing and most people, when they use this TV, they will watch movies. I'm gonna just turn on a horror movie now and let's see, we're gonna fast forward a bit to, let's say, it's hard to pick a scene that would be good reference for this video. Let's just pick this scene. That works fine. Let's pick this. Totally fine. Okay. So, when it comes to watching movies on your LG C4, the most important thing of your TV is image quality, contrast, and being able to see the stuff that is intended to be seen in the shadows, and um, maybe color as well if that's something that you really care about. So, when watching an SDR movie, I always use the Expert Bright Space mode. I go into this mode and you can just copy my settings, so be ready with your TV. Otherwise, just go back in the video or pause. We're gonna do the first very important part, which is brightness. We're gonna max these two out for the bright setting. 35 on black level is to make sure that midtones are the brightness correct that they should be and that the black levels are never in any movie black level rays. Now these settings are not for watching anime. I have uh, in the later on in this video I'm gonna talk about anime and Disney movies and Pixar so that you can use settings for that but this is for like horror movies uh, and more serious tone movies like Spider-Man 1 and 2 uh, you know the Incredible Hulk like older movies from 2008 and like less colorful movies essentially uh, so this is just gonna be perfect accuracy across the board. That's the important part here. So black level 35, auto contrast on the uh, auto dynamic contrast off, peak brightness high, gamma 2.2, um, uh, color 50, tint zero, color gamma auto detect, fine tune dark. Uh, sorry, fine tune uh, off on the fine tune, white balance warm 50 on the high point. We're gonna do. Minus 6, plus 4, plus 5. On the low point, we're gonna do a plus 5, green 0, and the blue minus 6. Now, uh, over to the like most important thing for all movies. On this preset, we're doing sharpness 40, no super res, and we're not using noise reduction at all or smooth gradation. We are using true motion, which will make it look like 60 FPS in movies. Um, it'll essentially take 24 FPS all the way up to 60 or more. I can recommend this option. It looks very good in motion. You might have some artifacts in some movies and then maybe in some scenes, but in general, it looks just way more vivid and way more impactful in my opinion. So I, I, I like this option. If you don't like it, you can try these other ones. I barely see a difference when, the, when they're on. Um, and also, if you don't have this on, you have the possibility to use the real cinema mode, which compensates slightly for the shadow that you see on an OLED. So if you want a purity in the image, and you're a purist, then use this mode instead. But uh, as I said, I am a purist, and I don't care for that type of purity. So no, that's not for me. So this is that mode. Now we have a dark mode as well, for people that don't like that much brightness. So Expert Dark Space Night is what it's called. Uh, and the settings are a little different, but they're also very close. We're gonna do OLED brightness 45, contrast 85, black level 35, peak brightness high, auto dynamic contrast off, the gamma 2.2. So it's it's basically the same thing after this, right? Exactly the same thing. The only thing that's different is in the brightness subset menu, you have 45 on brightness. 85 on contrast, then it's the exact same thing. And this is calibrated to perfection by ratings.com. This is their like recommended settings. So use these settings. I use expert for YouTube and I use the expert dark space night for when it's nighttime. And sometimes when I'm feeling a little bit frisky, I'll use the, <laughs> the expert dark space mode and I'll go down to reduce blue light. But I only do that when it's nighttime because you ruin the colors a little bit when you do this. So accuracy will be less accurate, but might produce less eye strain if it's nighttime and you're sitting in a dark room. So that's a good recommendation. However, I wouldn't use it for any other case. Okay, so that's the calibration for movies. Now we're gonna be a little bit more fun 
and I'm gonna show you best settings for anime and animated movies in general. So well, I'm first gonna give you the settings and then after that I'm gonna show you the comparison. So and yeah guys as oh wait I'm gonna get so copyright striked. There we go, that's a good frame. Hopefully we don't get copyright striked, okay? Oh, man! Stop flying around in the menus. This is so scary. <laughs> they, can ruin, they, can, they can remove my whole channel on YouTube. <laughs> it's, it's super scary. Okay, so Vivid mode is what we're going to be using. And we're using some different settings here. Oh, yes, by the way. Um, in the expert mode settings. Go into expert bright mode. Go into the settings tab. And this is important, guys. Very important, actually. Go into general, AI service, and make sure that AI Picture Pro is turned on. It's gonna be turned on for vivid mode and the two expert modes that we just calibrated. It's important. So go into all of the three modes and make sure that it's on, on each one. This will allow the image to upscale to a like, really nice 4K image. So, after we put that on vivid and on the expert modes, remember that, we're now calibrating Vivid, and we're gonna use really weird settings for Vivid. Really weird settings, but it's gonna look really good in the end. So brightness, it, like this man, this is, it's gonna come close to cue the OLED stuff, man. It, it, trust me. 100 OLED pixel brightness, 100 on the contrast, black level, this is a hard one. Either you dial this down and you lose a brightness full screen slightly, but you also make the image get pure contrast so what i will do here in some anime movies uh, like spirited away that you can that you can watch on netflix or other places that movie has a black level at 18 on the black level slider so if you want all of the black in that movie you have to drag down this all the way to 18 but you do lose some brightness in highlights and uh, in overall full brightness below 40 you start to lose brightness a lot I do recommend 35 minimum, but if you really want to get pure blacks, you're gonna have to drag this lower on some movies. But 35 across the board is definitely a good setting. However, in this anime movie and in most Pixar movies, I found that it's 38 is perfect. So for Pixar movies, Disney and this series, I don't remember what it's called. I, I just saw the name, but I, I forgot about it. 38 is what I recommend, and it also doesn't, you don't lose that much brightness, right? Now we have auto dynamic contrast, you can use this if you want to. It will seem brighter, but it isn't actually brighter. And it might also clear up some of the contrast that is lost in translation. Um, but it, this setting is not supposed to be like artistic intent or accurate in any way. It's just supposed to boost the visuals to make it more pleasing to watch. And that can mean a lot of things for many people. So high, medium, low, or off. Honestly, in this case, I think high and medium looks really good. So I'm gonna go with high. That doesn't mean that you will think that it looks good as well, just because I like it. Remember to have your own opinion to this because I might not be the best resource when it comes to picking an image for you particularly. So high is what I like right now, at least. I might change that in the future. Gamma, 2.2. Now the thing is with gamma, if the mid-tones are too dark, you can either drag up the black lone slider or use 1.9. However, contrast and the colors will become more washed out the higher you go on this scale. BT, 188.6 is definitely the most vibrant and 2.2 is accurate. Honestly guys, definitely go BT, uh, 188.6. On this case, it looks way better in my opinion. So, now, color. You can boost the color a lot on this TV, especially for watching movie and anime and stuff like that. So it's totally fine. We're gonna drag this up. I'm looking for color bleed. Okay, so right now at this frame, 85 works fine. So that's what I'm gonna pick. And on the color adjustment tab, we're gonna pick high. However, I can say the highlights in his hair become slightly brighter. No, sorry, slightly less bright, so uh, more dim. So if you want these highlights here to be brighter, then don't turn it on. 
We have some benefits using this on high, but in this case, it seems that it's actually dimming the image. So we're not gonna use fine tune, but in some animes, it might look really good with this on. So test it out for yourself. Now, the calibration. This is very, very, like this is a alpha build of my own calibration that I'm working on. It's not completely done yet. So if you try it out, you might not be extremely happy on your TV set because I'm not done yet. But I do recommend you to have this. So this is essentially D65 white point warmth without it being overly warm and without it having that green tint that LG OLEDs have. So essentially, you won't see any tint at all when you're looking at the screen now. And it will look a little bit more white and it will look brighter on white as well. However, you might get more idea. I have no idea. I haven't tested it completely yet. But it looks really good in all content that I've seen. However, it is not accurate. You are losing color accuracy when using my calibration now, with this specific calibration. But I'm gonna give you to it either way. Either use the calibration from the other settings that I used, which is calibrated accuracy, like you get 98% accuracy essentially with that one, or you use my calibration here in the game optimizer and all of that. Like it's up to you what looks the best to you. You can do one picture preset and then switch in between the two, and you'll see the difference. So, warm 10 is what I use on color temperature. And uh, we use a two point scale, just like the other calibration. And on low point, we do red 15, green minus eight, blue minus 15. And on high, we do the exact same thing. Now, wh when we do this, we realign the pixel color. I don't know how to say this in English, but like we realign the image to make sure that red is being pushed more, so more warm colors will come out of the image more. So white normally looks slightly, and this is important, warm will normally look a little bit more beige with this calibration. So to mitigate the, the skin tones looking more beige than they may be, no sorry, white, sorry, not, not skin tones. If white looks too beige to you, turn on fine tune and turn it to high. This will make white look more white, if that's something you noticed. Um, in my previous video, there was a woman with a very nice buttocks, uh, nice uh, behind, let's say, yes. <laughs> and uh, those pants were white. And when I used uh, fine tune with this calibration, I didn't do it in that video, but I, I have reference. You use uh, fine tune on high, and it's very clearly more white and brighter with these calibrations than the D65 white point that ratings did. So it is better, but it's not accurately calibrated because I'm not using a colorometer. So that's good to know. Uh, but yeah, so if white isn't white enough for you and it's way too beige, use fine tune high. Not a middle ground, use fine tune high, definitely. If you want less beige of an image. But I would say beige is way better than having a warm green image. So beige warm looks overall more natural, definitely. And you will get more cold of a look as well. And white will pop more. So this is a nice calibration that I've been uh, fiddling with. I'm not done with it, as I said. Uh, and with the sharpness sliders here, very important. We don't exceed 20. We want to do a super resolution medium. So sharpness 20, super resolution medium, and we max out the noise reduction on all of the three tabs, even smooth gradation. And we make sure to use the motion interpolation option. Now with these settings, we're getting a really good image across the board. However, when it comes to game optimizer, that's not for this movie. We're not talking about gaming, but if you want to use my calibration for gaming, it's totally fine. Just map that into the game optimizer. Uh, or use the calibratedratings.com. You now have two choices. You can use your own calibration, my beta test calibration that I'm not completely done yet, but I'm, I, I think I'm done. But I haven't tested it in all cases yet. I've tested it in uh, eight games and in six different movies. So, and it looks nice, definitely. Looks better than the D65. I'm gonna say, you can choose whatever you want to. And I want you guys to thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I hope you guys like, from the bottom of my heart, the experience of having a YouTube channel and getting the support that I'm getting. And I'm of course reading all of your guys' comments. And guys, I'm extremely proud and happy to have the small community that I have. 
And I love every single one of you. Thank you guys for commenting and supporting what I do. I, I, uh, I'm extremely excited every single time I'm gonna post a video, finding something new with these TVs. Um, this is a game changer for you guys, these settings. They will definitely make the content that you're watching go from blurry, pixelated to very clean. I'm not gonna show it off on camera because I'm actually short on time here, but try this out and you'll be surprised with how much sharper 1080p content looks. Like anime on your TV is gonna shine like never before and the calibrated image on movies, more, more raw looking movies like horror movies and, and the more desaturated movies like Spider-Man, the original series and Harry Potter and all of that, it's gonna look so good and so clean. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.